So how well do you do at using all of your remote controls? Maybe you have a whole handful of them in your home. Uh, the one operates the VCR, the one operates the DVD player, one operates the TV, one operates the sound system, one operates the streaming system. You have all these remotes, maybe you have a universal remote. Do you know what all the buttons on those remotes do? Have you ever found yourself pushing a button and then getting off on some skipping ahead in a movie or something? Uh, some other uh, place that sort of makes you lost and you don't even know what button you pushed? This is preparing for Sunday, where we take a look ahead at the upcoming Sunday's scripture. And this is a bit like pushing the wrong button on a remote. What I'm about to do to you will maybe give you a similar feel to what that makes you feel. Because this is for Sunday, October 31st, 2021. And we are celebrating this day as Reformation Sunday. It is Reformation Sunday. That's what's supposed to be on the screen. But I am actually using the scripture, if not the prayers and the litany, that's all going to be switched over for Reformation. The colors will all be switched over. But the, the scripture in particular uh, I'm sticking with what would would have been what's supposed to be the scripture for the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. So if a church isn't Lutheran and they follow the lectionary, these are the scriptures that they would use. And it's almost like I'm saying one thing with Reformation, but we've skipped back or we've stayed on this other thing, uh, and that I'm messing up all the usage of the remotes and we're all over the place. As a matter of fact, this week's first reading uh, is supposed to be uh, from Deuteronomy. And if you stick with the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost, it's supposed to be from Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. But I didn't feel like that really felt, felt right with what I was thinking or what I feel led to talk about. So I'm actually using uh, the alternative lectionary one reading for the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. There's no way you could follow any of that stuff. It is like pushing all the wrong buttons on the remote. That's what this Sunday uh, is bound to feel like. I guess the point is that I wanted to continue in the story of Mark. Uh, and that's what's asked for in the lectionary for the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. Reformation Sunday always uses John 8. And I wanted to stay in the story of Mark because we've talked about that so much. So... Uh, the thing is, even when you feel like you're oriented, even when I say, hey, the gospel for this week, out of all that gibberish, is going to be Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 34. That's where we're going to land. Even when I say that, you still need to look at your remote because we have now skipped ahead some in Mark. Last Sunday, we concluded chapter 10. And this reading is going to jump all the way ahead to chapter 12, verses 28 through 34. I'll spend a little bit of time in the next few minutes uh, just sort of skimming, in a few seconds I hope, skimming uh, what we're skipping over and give you a feel for that. At the conclusion of last week's gospel, Jesus has moved through Jericho on his way to Jerusalem. He's healed the Matthew and Luke, call him the anonymous blind man. Mark calls him bar Timius, and I talked a lot about that in worship on Sunday. So he's performed that healing in Jericho, and the next story that we get is the triumphal entry. Some tie-in with bar Timius's cloak, and the cloaks thrown on the road at the triumphal entry. That is Mark 11, 1 through 11. Then we get an interlude in Mark 11, 12 through 14, where God curses, or Jesus, God curses a fig tree. Uh, many, many years ago here at St. Stephen, uh, I had a Sunday where I told you all that God hates figs. God hates figs. And I told you that because there are several places in the Bible where Jesus curses fig trees. We're skipping that and in, in that skip button on the remote for this week. Then Jesus uh, goes back into Jerusalem proper in Mark 11, 15 through 19. 
and that's where we get the story of the cleansing of the temple in Mark. Then we get another interlude where he uh, talks a little bit more about cursed fig trees, which tells us that it's connecting to what he sees in Jerusalem. This fig tree business connects to uh, the leadership and, and what he's hearing and confronting in Jerusalem. And keep in mind that now that Jesus is in Jerusalem, he's entered the real sort of hotbed of his world. Uh, he's gone to sort of ground zero for all the politics and all the religion and all the anxiety and turmoil, and he's now in Jerusalem. Um, so he uh, um, gets all sorts of questions in chapter 11 and into chapter 12 from authority figures. He begins in 11, 27 through 33 to begin to get questions about authority from leaders. Uh, in 12, 1 through 12, uh, he gets more uh, questions from authority figures testing. Uh, in in uh, 12, 13 through 17, uh, he gets uh, questioned by and, and, and has to talk some about the Pharisees and the Herodians. Um, as a bit of a sidelight, I will tell you, uh, that uh, last night, at last night's temple talk, or t table talk, if I can talk properly, at Thursday night's table talk, we talked some about the different groups in Jesus' world, the Sadducees, Pharisees, Herodians, Essenes, uh, scribes, where these all people fit in the scripture. So this is sort of a shameless plug. If you hear those types of words, uh, I do sort of teach or talk about or try to extrapolate what that's all about. We did that some at last night's table talk, which you are always uh, welcome to join, so that's a shameless plug. Um, and I'm talking now, I'm back into talking about Mark chapter 12, verses 13 through 17. He is getting uh, asked questions, and he's talking about Pharisees and Her the Herodians, uh, different groups that are in different types of authority are asking him questions. Remember, Jesus has now entered into Jerusalem in the story of Mark as we read it through the lectionary, or as I force you to read it, read it from the lectionary, that even though it's Reformation, I'm still in Mark. In Mark 12, 18 through 27, Jesus is approached by the Sadducees and he's asked about resurrection. So this is significant simply because the Sadducees are their own group who occupy their own seat of authority, this is another group, yet another group of authority. There's the Romans, the Pharisees, the Herodians, the Sadducees, the scribes. Uh, there's people outside of Jerusalem. The, uh, Jerusalem is the hotbed for politics, religion, anxiety, uh, duplicitousness, uh, all the stuff you expect like in back rooms in, in the state house or at the Capitol building, uh, something like that. Uh, in Mark 12, 18 through 27, the Sadducees attest Jesus about resurrection. And here's a little fun little sort of thing uh, to keep in mind. I've always was taught that the Sadducees, Sadducees are a group who existed in Jesus' world. They're a religious group uh, who have certain views, who occupy seats of power in Jesus' world, like Republicans or Democrats, but they're Sadducees, that's their title. The Sadducees are sad you see the Sadducees are sad you see Sadducees are sad you see because they don't believe in the resurrection and that's why they're testing Jesus about it and Jesus is in the middle of all these groups and their politics and their ideas and he's uh, this guy from Nazareth who, who's uh, now in the middle of this hotbed who's come in with the triumphal entry, everybody's saying, this guy is it. This guy should be the next president. No, I mean, Messiah. And, and then all the groups are quizzing him and putting him through the ringer to make sure, or, or to even maybe jealously challenge if he really is all that people are saying that he is. So that finally gets me to, and I told you, this was like a remote control that's just gone haywire. I'm all over the place, right? So that finally gets me to the reading for this Sunday, 
It's Mark 12, 28 through 34. We've skipped ahead two chapters in Mark, which I've just given a quick synopsis of. We're supposed to be in John for Reformation Sunday, but I'm staying in Mark, and the reading is from Mark, it's chapter 12, 28 through 34. And this is where a scribe, yet another group, a, a member of the scribes comes forward and asks Jesus what the greatest law, what the greatest commandment is. All right? So you can read that in Mark 12, 28 through 34. It will be read for us in worship. Uh, my my uh, time with you, my, my reflection, my sermon will be uh, further in depth on on Mark 12, 28, 28 through 34, what that, I think, might mean for us today. And we'll do some things to sort of think about that uh, in worship, which I hope to see you at, uh, this upcoming Sunday. Uh, some things that go on here. Uh, Jesus says, listen. Now, I have to do this like at my own house. Sometimes my boys are kind of aging out of this. Uh, I have a 17-year-old, a 14-year-old. They're kind of aging out of this. But sometimes I still have to say, hey, listen. And I have to sort of get their attention and get them to make eye contact with me to hear that I'm hurt. Listen, I'll pick you up at this place at this time. I'm afraid that if I say that and they are just like on their phone or whatever, they won't really hear me. Mark has Jesus addressing people all the time, especially these authorities all through 11 and 12. Listen, listen, you're so sure that you know what's going on. You're so stuck in your politic or your belief or your whatever that you're going to hear what you want to hear. Jesus says, listen, he's really trying to drive down into a uh, connection, uh, meet each other's eyes, that sort of thing. And that's, that's present in this Sunday's Gospel reading, and that's present a lot here in Mark. It really springs up in this 11th and 12th chapter. Um, and then there's this part about hearing, really needing to hear. You know, listen, you know, if this is, you have ears but don't hear, you know, there's scripture about that. You really need to hear this. This needs to be heard. It needs to become... Um, part of who you are. It can't just be for a scribe that he's talking to here. It can't just be a thing that we write down and make other people do. This needs to be a thing that's meaningful, that our souls are connected to, that's important, that, that our hearts feel, that our lives are built around. It can't just be something written. It needs to be heard, understood. Listen, hear, like really take this in. And that's part of Mark 12, 28 through 34. You will probably hear that part now when it is read in worship. So uh, one of the background pieces of Mark is that the book itself was, or we're not quite sure, but it seems like it was probably written once the temple has been, uh, has fallen for the second time. Uh, Way back in the Old Testament, the temple fell, there was uh, the exile, and then the people return and build the temple. Um, and then uh, it ends up, uh, you know, and I have the date sort of on the tip of my head. I want to say at about 70 AD um, or BCE, uh, about the year 70, the temple was uh, down for the second time. And this time it involves the Romans and some of those other groups in that hotbed of Jerusalem. Uh, zealots and Essenes and some other folks um, and the temple falls for a second time in 70 that is after Jesus time on earth but the gospel was still probably an oral thing until then the gospels are very apocalyptic because they're seeing this cluster mess of Jerusalem all come to fruition the temple is down their center is lost uh, and so Mark is probably written and being heard by people after the temple has already fallen. And Jesus is giving in this text some things that people can do to have God draw close to them or pull them close without the temple. So this is important because if the temple is your center and it's gone, where is God? How do we meet God? How do we worship? And Jesus gives these commandments 
uh, the Lord your God is one. Uh, honor the Lord your God. God is one. Love your neighbor as yourself. These are the two greatest commandments. The first is the Lord your God is one. Uh, and the second is like it. Uh, love your neighbor as yourself. These are things that you can do uh, even after the temple has fallen. And that's uh, part of the chaos of Mark. It's why Jesus goes into Jerusalem in Mark, and it's sort of an a explanation of how all the chaos that Jesus is a part of, and it culminates in the collapse of the temple, or the taking down of the temple, um, is, is turmoil, chaos, uh, apocalyptic for people. And then Jesus is saying that these commandments can be guidance, help in the middle of chaos to see you through. So the remote is skipping all over the place. For me, I'm using different readings. I'm skipping through Mark because the lectionary does that. Um, but our home button, if your remote has that, your home button here is these two great commandments that are a part of who we are, no matter how chaotic everything gets. I think that fits the life that we lead at this point with how crazy, hectic, chaotic they are. Um, I think too, um, it's important for us to hear this Lord our God is one. At this point, I, most of the people who are watching this will probably think, oh, I, I understand that the Lord our God is one. Why is this such an important commandment? The Lord our God is one. You're probably thinking, I already know that. Trinity, you know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three, but really one. I already know that. Why does Jesus need to tell me this commandment? Well, the truth is, is that we don't behave like the Lord our God is one. We live in what I will call a world of cultural pluralism. Lots of choices. Lots of other things that we can do. Lots of other places where we can find meaning. And when we find meaning in those other places, instead of in our faith and in who God is and who God calls us to be, we're not living like the Lord our God is one. We're living like we have other gods before. So this is actually as pertinent now as it's ever been. Uh, and, and we don't maybe hear this well, um, but, but these are commandments. The Lord your God is one. Worship the Lord your God who is one. Uh, and love your neighbor as yourself. These are commandments. They are meant for us to, hey, listen. These are commandments, and God's hope is that we'll hear them. And they seem simple. Love your neighbor as yourself. How well do we really love ourselves or take good care of ourselves? How well do we really take care of our neighbors or love them? How well do we really believe that the Lord our God is one and don't uh, prioritize everything else? These are the simple tenets of faith that if we were to focus on just these three things, loving uh, ourselves because God loves us, loving our neighbor because God loves them, and then understanding that the greatest commandment is, you know, that the Lord our God is one, that that's where we find our meaning. If every day we could remind ourselves of that, it would be hard enough to get through the day doing that properly. Just those three things. The Lord, the, the Lord your God is one. Love your neighbor as yourself. It would be hard enough for you and I to get through the day just doing that. Sometimes we make it much more complicated. We're skipping all around. The remotes have all these buttons. And really it's just this button. The Lord your God is one. Love your neighbor as yourself. This is the home button. And it would be enough for us to just push that one. To just have that button on our remote. This is a commandment. You and I are never going to do this well. It doesn't mean that we don't try it. It doesn't mean we don't try to love the Lord our God as one and love our neighbors as ourselves. It doesn't mean we don't prayerfully ask God to guide us into that. It means that, uh, you know, we make our lives too complicated. To love ourselves, to love our neighbors, to love our Lord is enough. And if we would just sort of focus on those three things, it would be enough and we would fail even at that. God loves me. God loves you, even when we can't accomplish all this very well. But God continues to command us, these are the things you're supposed to listen and hear. The Lord our God is one. Love our neighbor as ourselves. 
I will reflect more on that uh, uh, in uh, worship together with you on Sunday, but this is an introduction to that, and so now uh, you know why I chose it. I wanted to follow through with Mark since we've spent so much time talking about it. I've given a synopsis of some of the text the lectionary skips. I've talked some about the 12th chapter, and I've talked to you about uh, home button, and this is where we'll be. We'll come home. We'll come to St. Stephen, and we'll focus on the greatest commandment, to love our neighbor as ourselves, and that our, the Lord our God is one, and we'll try to just practice that together. So right before I wrap up, though, I want to mention one additional thing. Tomorrow, Saturday, at 11 a.m., we will gather to take good care of the Finley family. As you know and as I know, the Finleys have been through quite a bit. They've especially been through a lot in the last couple of weeks. We will remember Mary, 11 a.m. tomorrow morning, and we will gather together to comfort each other and to comfort Steve, Jacob, and Zachary uh, in their grief. To prepare for that, I'm not going to go on and on. I simply would say to you uh, to prepare for what we'll do as uh, the text for uh, Mary's funeral. Uh, I, would, I would have you look at the books of the Old Testament. How many are there? What are they? That's, that's the tease I'll give for tomorrow's service. Um, so we've prepared for uh, um, Sunday, uh, Reformation Sunday. I've grounded you and explained why I'm going to read from Mark, and I've given some background on that. I've given a backward teaser for last night's table talk, a forward teaser for tomorrow morning's service for Mary. I hope to see you at some of those things as we continue to remember that we are the people of God who are learning together to love ourselves, to love our neighbor, and to love God, uh, who is one. Uh, we'll practice all of that. We practice that at Table Talks. We'll practice that together for each other and for the Finleys. And then we'll gather for worship on Sunday as well. And we'll focus again on this. Um, so this is Preparing for Sunday. Thank you for joining me. Stay safe. I hope to see you soon.